Garage Symposium. I'm Austin. The video you've been waiting for, the unboxing of the new watch. All right, so we have the outer box here, and you can see it's taken a hit there sometime in its life. And uh, this is the outer box. And we've got the black inner box inside. And I got this free cloth and this is the shop where I got it. Now, I don't recommend any one particular shop when shopping in Japan. It's all about the piece, all right? It's all about finding the the perfect piece and it could be in this shop or it could be in another one. But uh, that particular shop, I bought my no-date sub, my blue hydronaut, and, and this one right here. All right, so I've got the paper wallet and, and this is the the guarantee booklet. Oh, uh, here I'll just show you a little bit. Talks about the guarantee and then and then some of the places where you can have the the watch serviced. So that's on this side and then the card here. You can see the model number right there. Uh, shop, I guess where they sold it model number and uh, serial number and I believe this is Italy right and it's a uh, it's a 2008 piece but it was sold in 2011 October of 2011 and a lot of this particular model wound up in Italy and a lot of them are in Italy now and being sold out of Italy and and I don't know why but uh, there you go okay so got that Okay, so let's take the inner box out. All right, and here it is. Many people got it, uh, some people didn't, but the Iconaut, the Iconaut, let's sort of zoom in a bit if I can. All right, the Iconaut, and uh, what can I say about this watch? Well. From 2008 to 2014, they produced this watch, and you know, what is it? Well, it's a multi-function watch, and they don't make anything like it now. Rolex doesn't make anything like it. It's just packed full of functions. You've got the 24-hour bezel, which is, uh, wow, that's uh, a lot of people have mixed feelings about this. Um, I'm totally used to it, but it's very uh, Explorer 2-esque, and it's uh, with that 24 hour hand there, it's the 24 hour function. It's got the chronograph, let's uh, do that. It's got a Valju 7754 movement and, um, and that's like a 7750 with the GMT function. And this doesn't engage when, when you're running the chronograph. All right, and it's got the date at the four it's got the running seconds at the nine uh, minutes at the the top and and these are hours down at the six o'clock sub dial and let's see what we have here all right so now this is uh, an unpolished piece it's been inspected and uh, can I say about it? It's a big watch, 43 or 43.5 millimeters, and you've got uh, polished uh, lugs right there, and it's a uh, yeah, polished case. Hey, you can see me, guys. How are you? It's got a flip lock clasp. And what else did it come with? Well, it came with uh, the book here, okay, in, in the pocket. It's really hard to get documents in and out, so I don't put the card in there. And um, I had one link taken out. I think the bracelet, 19 millimeters, and, and so I have it uh, adjusted to the, to the middle setting. And it's got the, the, the hang tag here. All right, 
And, uh, oh, okay, let's watch the, the uh, chronograph do its thing. Okay, the subdial at the top, you'll see it change over. There you go, and uh, there you have it. All right, so what are my impressions? Well, let's talk about it, but first, let's stop the chronograph, reset it. All right, so my impressions of the Iconaut. This is not gonna be an exhaustive review, it's just gonna be some impressions I've felt in the last couple days of wearing it. And first of all, let's talk about accuracy. It's running about 0.25 seconds slow a day, so about a quarter of a second slow a day. Now, I've worn it pretty much the whole time I've slept in it. I haven't worn it in the shower, so um, I don't know if positioning it will, I'll be able to tweak the accuracy, and I don't know if running the chronograph is going to change the accuracy. I will experiment with all of that, but a very accurate watch, and, and just if I set it 10 seconds fast, it'll be good for over a month. So pretty happy with the accuracy. And uh, let's talk about the size. That's probably the most noticeable thing. And some watches, you can get away with uh, misfitting them, misfitting them, wearing them kind of loose. Think a 36 millimeter Datejust on a Jubilee bracelet. A lot of older guys will wear that real, you know, <laughs> loosey goosey style. You couldn't do that with this watch. And the day that I got it, I actually came back and that evening I thought, I don't know if I can do this watch. I don't know if I can handle it. I micro adjusted it. I took it in a little bit. And after that, it was a lot better. Plus it took some time to get used to it and I'm totally used to it now. But if it's not sized correctly, then you know, it can kind of turn and this can sort of press, press on the arm and an, uncomfortable way. Also, you know, and this is the way I think all watches should be worn. You really wouldn't want to wear this on the wrist bone. Okay. So I kind of like to put it up and it, and it stays put, stays put. And like I said, I've gotten used to it, but that's not to say I don't notice it. I do notice it. And some people would say, if you notice it, you're noticing it because it's big, it's kind of uncomfortable. It's probably better not to even notice a watch. And when you're talking a 40 millimeter Rolex, and the Hydronauts, to an extent, though the Hydronaut, the crown can get a little, um, you know, it can it can dig a little bit at times. For the most part, those 40 millimeter steel professional watches that I have, don't even notice them. I mean, you put on the Explorer 2, the No Date Sub, the GMT Master 2, you don't notice those watches, and that's really what you want. But you do notice this, okay? But again, it's not... Uh, it's not like I notice it because it's uncomfortable. I just notice it because it's big, all right? And um, look, a lot of people talk about wrist presence. And if you're talking something like, you know, a high status brand, like a, a Rolex, I can understand where the deep sea comes into it. I mean, that's a really, you know, macho machismo sort of, you know, uh, alpha male watch. This is a tutor, okay? And so, it doesn't have that sort of punch. And I often have to remind myself that, you know, there is that Rolex connection. I tend to take it for granted, but I have to remember that, you know, there, there, there is that Rolex connection, okay? And look, having a big watch for a big watch's sake doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Those cheap, you know, Casios that are really big on the wrist, I don't get it, okay? Um, but when it's a really nice luxury watch, I think it's kind of cool. Now. Is this a luxury watch? Well, that's a great debate. I really would say that Tudor, it's not really a luxury brand in my opinion. They've got some kind of fancy looking watches and they're really high quality, but you know, you really need brand status when you're talking a luxury item. So I wouldn't say that this is a luxury watch, but even so, I feel like the size, um, well, it projects some sort of, you know, horological, alpha maleness that uh, that I think is kind of fun, all right? And let's talk about my favorite thing about this watch, and it's all of the functions. It's everything. You are not for want of functions in this watch. And it's kind of like a Swiss Army knife. You know, when you get one and you start carrying one around, well, 
you know, you might ask yourself why you're doing it the first couple of days when you're not using it, but eventually through the weeks and through the months, it tends to earn its keep and you, you break it out on certain occasions. And I think this watch is like that. Have I used the chronograph aside from just playing with it? Not really in any sort of legitimate way. In fact, you know, I've been using the time, that's no surprise, the date, the GMT function, which is set to Eastern Standard Time, not really, not really. It'd be a great travel watch uh, for that. Again, some people would say they'd want a smaller travel watch. I get that argument. Um, and as far as the chronograph, I really haven't used it except just to play with it, just to run it and watch the minutes and the hours tick up. I've played with it like a, like a kid, and that's kind of fun. And this is the first chronograph I've had with a totalizer. And it, it's all about the functions. And when you're talking tutor, there's often a Rolex answer to any tutor question. You know, why get a Ranger when you can have an Explorer? Why get the Tudor GMT when you can, you know, really have the punchy Rolex GMT? Why go Black Bay when you can go with a sub, right? There's always a Rolex, and if you're a Rolex fanboy, this comes into play here, that does everything that that Tudor does, but makes you feel that feeling that you have when you have a Rolex on your wrist. Well, there's no Rolex answer to this watch, and that's kind of something I appreciate about it. There's never going to be likely another Tudor that does as much as this does, and there has never been and never will be a Rolex that does as much. Rolex doesn't play the value game, which, you know, this watch is, there's a lot of value in this watch in terms of functions. They've got their watches, they have their certain identity, their their functions. If you want to dive watch with a rotating timing bezel, you've got your option. If you want a GMT, well, you've got a couple of options. If you want one with a rotating bezel, you've got one option there. If you want the, <clears throat> you know, there's always, there's always, uh, you know, a watch for a particular occasion with Rolex, but there's not a watch for really every single situation. You know, a Swiss army knife of functions kind of watch. And so in that sense, it, it gives me a, a, an experience that, for example, the Hydronauts don't because, you know, again, there's, there's the Rolex Submariner, all right, that arguably does something better. The functions and, you know, we're talking functions here, aesthetics, there's a lot going on with a Hydronaut, okay, so I don't want to dismiss that, and that's really what you go for with that recess bezel and the value proposition and all that, but we're just talking functions here, and really there's there's nothing that Rolex or Tudor does that has the functions of this, and so it's fun. It's fun. Now, could it be better with a crown on the dial and, and Rolex, uh, you know, branded? Oh, yeah, I mean, that would be amazing, and if Rolex ever did that, they never will, or they never will, but if they did, it would be an amazing watch. Can you imagine if they they made a watch like this in sort of a, a smaller case. Oh, I mean, it would be the one watch to rule them all. It would be the one watch you could get and just wear all the time. It would have everything. And the closest thing is really the GMT Master too, because you can use that bezel like a timing bezel, but it's different because, you know, this, this has like a proper chronograph. If Rolex ever did do that, then the premium that watch would sell for would be incredible. And partially so because I can't see paying crazy premiums for like the, the GMT and the, and the sub, but I could probably justify it with a sort of does everything Rolex because I would think to myself, well, yeah, I'm paying twice the price, but this will be the last one I ever buy. Anyway, we're just talking fantasy here. It's never going to happen. But this watch isn't fantasy. It's uh, a reality. And you know, this is sort of just a general kind of impression video. And I like it. I like it. And I'm glad to have put that desire to rest. And um, and it's kind of interesting. And I will leave you with this link in the description. But I actually came across not this particular watch, although I did compare the 
the serial numbers. And uh, I think this one is slightly older, but it's the same dial style. I came across this watch in Fukuoka during a shopping video. I'll put a link to that in the description. Check it out. But it's interesting to see my impressions of this watch back when I didn't have it and I wasn't sure I was ever going to get it. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because I went back to that video to see how it wore before I actually went to see this. And, uh, yeah, uh, there you go. I like it. It's, it's a, it's a polarizing watch because it's so weird looking and it's, and it's big and, you know, it doesn't have, uh, a, a real, you know, identity perhaps, you know, I don't know. It's, it's the icon was, was this supposed to be, you know, the, the icon, the top of the top, the alpha male among the knots, the aeronaut and the hydronaut that they thought would be the clear icon that everybody wanted. Well, that didn't work out too well. It turned out to be a failure, didn't it? It's kind of like somebody making a, you know, a, a, an, a piece of artwork that they think is going to bring them fortune and fame, but in the end it just gets them totally the opposite, derision, fired from their job and, and perhaps lawsuits and, and an arrest. You know, it's, it's like the intention is here, but the outcome uh, much, much lower. And, and perhaps that is the horological incarnation of this watch. You know, they thought it was going to be peak of the peak, the Iconaut, when it was complete failure. But failures can be fun. They can be interesting. And hey, if you can reach one person, and they have, uh, then then I think it's kind of cool. All right. Well, let me know what you think about this watch. Tim Masso calls it an occult watch. <laughs> Am I a cult member now? I suppose so. I've always, I've always, it's been in the back of my mind. So I've always uh, had that inclination. And now I'm full-fledged in. All right. Well, let me know what you think. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, what are the good points? What are the bad points? What are your impressions? Are you surprised? Did I make a terrible mistake? Is it going to hold its value? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Oh, also in that in that video from Fukuoka, the price. I talk about the price of that particular watch. Hey, looks like I got a good deal. All right. Let me know what you think. Take care. Thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.